OK, welcome everyone to uh, how to host an effective event using Microsoft Teams or Yammer as a live event. Um, and uh, of course, we're running this first part as uh, a live event. Um, and to start us off, um, I'd like to uh, go to um, acknowledge that we are on uh, the uh, traditional custodians of the land. I'm actually, um, I'm actually, we're obviously doing this virtually. I'm actually um, doing this um, from Noosa. So the Aboriginal lands here are Kuroi. Um, and obviously we have speakers from around Australia and attendees. So um, we acknowledge um, the, um, the lands on which um, you're based and we would like to pay our respects to elders past, present and future. We have been running um, business user groups for Microsoft 365 for a number of years in a traditional sense. So when we've actually caught up in a meeting room and then uh, and then gone to the pub afterwards. In this uh, COVID period, we're obviously uh, um, uh, replicating such experiences virtually. So we're gonna show you how to do that um, um, using uh, Teams Live. Uh, and then we're gonna try and replicate our sort of go to the pub afterwards and have a conversation um, using a traditional Teams event. So there's gonna be two, uh, there's gonna be two parts um, for this. Stay tuned when we're about half an hour in, we'll give you the link and you can uh, you can switch out of the live event um, so we can go to um, a Teams event um, and that'll enable us to have conversations and have everyone interact. But for today, I've got three of my absolute favourite people. Um, Matt Dodd um, from uh, Engage Squared in WA and the last time I was on a plane previous to this was um, working with Matt when he started with Engage Squared. Um, and we also have uh, Mel um, Grant, who is um, uh, a bit of a, a legend in the business. Also, runs uh, lots of was running lots of teams um, training, etc. For Qantas and ABC, has now joined um, Engage Squared, and she does a lot of our producing. So she's got a lot of expertise in this area. And relatively new to our business is uh, our gun marketing um, uh, person, Steph Ryan. And Steph, I, I think we should get you to maybe talk because I know this is like some people in the audience. This is um, Teams Live is sort of new to you. Just just tell us about how your first experience has been um, um, with Teams and Teams Live events. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, since I started, I have been part of many Teams meetings and also live events. And at first I kind of questioned, oh, why would you have one rather than the other? And last week I was actually part of a Teams meeting, which was great, but there were a lot of people on the call. And what I noticed was that people kept on needing to be admitted to the lobby, which meant that there was a break on the screen every time that happened. And people would often come on when they weren't on mute, which would then also cause the presenter to ask, oh, could you put yourself on mute? And for me, that was kind of the, the light bulb moment where I thought this is why you do live events because you want to present to people but you don't necessarily need instant feedback from them right at that point so for me that was re really the point where I realized what the differences were and I'm really excited to be part of this webinar to to learn more about the producer role the presenter role and how you do have conversations with people watching whether that be through Q&A or what we're going to be do, doing which is actually moving to a team meeting afterwards so yeah I'm excited that's great, and, I, and it's a good uh, a good ex description of you being in the uh, um, the organizer role in this in this particular for this particular event. So thanks, Steph. Thank you. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's my cue to start talking. Hi, everybody. Um, we're really just first going to start with what are the differences between the different types of meetings that can happen in. Uh, within the Teams or Office 365 environment. So up at the top left here, we've got the standard Teams meeting, which most people are familiar with. Everybody joins the meeting, everyone can share, everybody can talk. We basically all join the meeting as equals. Now underneath that, 
there's a little bit of what I call Teams presentations, and it's a little bit of a tweak to a Teams meeting where we set the settings so that some people have uh, more presenting skills and others are there more for listening. And I liken this to back in the old days when we're all at work and the boss would call everyone into a large room and uh, if someone wanted to ask a question, a microphone got kind of handed around in the audience. Oh, you know, oh, lady up there in the green shirt, do you want to ask a question? And someone would run across with a microphone. So the presentation uh, allows some people to be presenters and others to be attendees, but there can be some interaction from the audience when the presenters um, you know, think that it's appropriate. And you can see also we've put in the bottom corner of these that regular Teams meetings start to fall apart a little when there's about 30 people. Um, teams presentations, you could very comfortably go up to the 300 um, limit. Moving on from that, um, yep, go ahead, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Yeah, no, I was just, I was the classic trying to make sure I was muted and unmuted, get into those things in a moment. Um, yeah, the, as we switch into the live event space, um, kind of two choices really um, when it comes to Teams. You can set up a live event natively in Teams, which is what you're experiencing now. This is um, being run and produced in Teams. Um, very much a kind of presentation, one way style. There are interactions, obviously there's Q&A panels, which if you do have questions, please use the little Q&A uh, panel. We've turned that on so you can ask questions as we go. Um, and then there's a Yammer live event. And really the big difference between those two is more about where people consume the, the, the event. Teams live events, you need to send out the invite. You need to make sure that people have the right link to come and join. With a, uh, a live event, when you do that in Yammer, pretty much the only thing you need is um, them to know which which community that live event is taking place. If you go into Yammer while a live event's running, it will actually show you that there's a live event on and you can click in and join. Uh, and all the kind of Q&A functions and the interactions live in that Yammer space. Um, so that's really handy when you're doing these. It, it's more like, you know, you've got an event and the doors open and you can welcome anybody in. You don't need to have an invite. Everybody's welcome. So you can start to kind of think about, do I need it to be more exclusive? Do I need to control the audience and manage the, the people that I'm in, inviting? In which case you might want to use the Teams live event. Whereas if it's a, a kind of more open one that's internal to your organization, then that's where you might want to think about the, the sort of Yammer live event. And the experience afterwards is a bit different as well. The Yammer live event, you can go back into that community, you can find the event very easily and you can see all the Q&A and everything's kind of contained in Yammer. So it's pretty handy in that way. But there are a couple of limitations with that. Numbers are really good. As Mel said, we put it there. It's, it, it, it's normally 10,000, it's been up to 20,000 at the moment. And actually, if you get in touch with Microsoft, you can actually go up to 100,000 with, with live events. So lots of capacity to, to engage with people across your organization. Mel, anything else you want to add scenario-wise uh, that you think around setting No, I think you've covered it pretty well. Let's get into the, the show and tell. Okay. So we want to do a little bit of an experiment. We like to make sure that even though this is a live event, and as we've just explained, it means that you can't come off mute and, and uh, communicate with us. Obviously, there's the Q and the Q and A function, but what we'd like to do is just give it a quick go um, on um, a little test here. If you've got your mobile phone, if you um, put that on the QR code, you'll go to a little site and there'll be a little quiz. Um, or if you're on, online and on, on a browser, if you go to www.menti.com, it'll ask you for a code, put in the 445505 and you'll get a little, um, a little quiz just to um, ask you around whether you've engaged in any live events. Have you done team meetings? Have you done the sort of more presentation type style things, but still using Teams meetings or have you actually dabbled with um, live events. It'd be useful just to get a, a few people in to, to see and then hopefully we can start to see some results um, coming in. 
this is where we really test it. I'm going to move on to the next slide and it should be showing some results. Oh, look at that. <laughs> For a moment there, I was like, OK, it's not going to work. <laughs> Breathe a bit of <laughs> a sigh of relief. Right, so we've got a few people that have done um, some live events. That's always, that's good. Um, lots of standard meetings. Hopefully you'll get then something out of this to see how you might want to use the, the, the live events. And we've had obviously have a few people that have done the little presentation meetings using those attendee functions. We won't really delve into any of that in this session, um, but it is always good to know that you can tweak a normal, a normal Teams meeting just to give you a little bit more control, avoid some of the stuff that Steph said with, you know, the lobby people coming in and different things pinging off while you're going and people coming off mute when you when you don't want them to so yeah i noticed matt see. there's not a single person you obviously didn't vote because there's not a single I didn't person vote. Okay. <laughs> I the, so, yeah, so, okay so the yammer it's live not will, one so that's a great learning interested. experience yes hopefully people are interested in that and we can uh, really give them a, a good go through that but I guess what we'll do move on now is kind of think about step back and go, well, how do you start with all of this? What are the roles and, and, and where does it go? And Mel, Mel is the perfect person for this because she's actually probably been. I have worked in television. <laughs> <laughs> so Mel, uh, yeah, so, roles. so we are talking only about live events now, Teams live events and Yammer live events and what needs to happen to get them up and running. So uh, like I said, it's just like working in TV. Firstly, you need the organiser and the organiser is the person who knows what's going on and um, they need to know like who should we be booking, who's our talent, uh, you know, uh, when, what features are we going to include, do we need it to be recorded, who is our audience going to be um, and then basically how am I going to get these invites out to people. So they're the, they're the one who, who sets it all up. The presenter is that good looking chap who speaks to the camera as Matt and I are doing now or shows slides. So they have content that they want to share with an audience. The producer is the one who decides what is going to air uh, at, the, at the one time. So, you know, in a normal TV environment, it'd be, you know, camera one, we want you on screen or now we're going to show a graphic um, or now we're going off to the reporter in the field, whatever it is, that's the producer's job to say which, which content is actually being displayed at the one time. And the attendees, that's all you guys, uh, it's like sitting on the couch at home. You get to sit and watch. Um, you also get to sub submit questions if that feature's been turned on. And you can pause and rewind and catch up. You can play at faster speed. So, um, you know, if you potentially someone calls you and you need to take that phone call, you could pause. There's controls down the bottom of this screen for you to pause and then either just play it later or um, go a little faster or just catch up to whatever live timings are. So um, I might continue on for this next slide, Matt, if you just please go yep. to the next slide. Um, and this is the process that happens. So across the top, we've got the organizer's role, then the producer, then the presenter, and then the attendee. So um, on mine, this is a little bit small print, but I hope it's bigger on your screen. But basically, um, the organizer sets up the event, sends out the invitations. Then just before the event, the producer, presenter, and attendees all kind of get ready. You guys would have, you know, said, hey, I'm about to join that session. Where is my link? Where do I click? That kind of stuff. And before the show starts, you would have got a little message that says, um, you know, the live event hasn't started yet. But the presenter and the producer, we've been online ahead of time. We've checked that our audio is working. We've checked that we can share. We've checked that everybody's here that needs to be here. Um, and it's the producer's role to then start the event. Once the event is started, it cannot be paused or stopped. Um, it, once it's stopped, it, do, it doesn't get restarted again. So you need to make sure you've done that preparation ahead of time. Then during the event, I'm the one who's producing this one. So I'm deciding what slides shall we show, what faces will we show, that kind of thing. And then um, the presenters are actually talking to camera or showing their um, slides and they can also be moderating the question and answer panel. 
Um, I think, Mark, I'm not sure if we actually gave you that job, but that is your job from now on. Um, and the attendees are got watching. It, got it. <laughs> answering telephone calls if you need to, pausing, catching up and asking questions. But then it's only the producer again who can end the event. Um, and so once that's done, it's done. There's no call back again. Um, and afterwards, we would recommend follow up. So if you're running an event, you'll often have questions that can't be answered or you might want to send out a recording of the, um, the event or you might want to uh, reach out to potential customers who attended that, that may um, you know, produce uh, future business for you. Next slide, please. Well, I can I can cover off the uh, the limits if you like, Mel. Um, there's there's and I'll, I'll hopefully touch on a few of the questions because I can see some questions coming up, which is great. Um, as Mel said, they can't be paused. Um, it, this is the bit that's most nervous. I was always most nervous when I was running live events. Is that once you click that start button, you almost want to have a big piece of tape that covers over the bit that says end because, you know. It, it's very easy just to click on it and obviously at that point everybody gets thrown out of the event so that's the one to be really careful of a good tip around that if you're going to advertise a link use a, a link shortening sometimes or a, or a bitly link can be really handy because then if you do need if you do by <laughs> mistake stop your event uh, you can just change the bitly link because obviously people will be clicking on that you can point it to the new event if you can get one um, set up very quickly um, yeah unmuting <laughs> you can't do it right obviously this is the downside that interaction and it's why we've split this event in two you can't get that you know little bit of um a little bit of banter or a little bit of, of conversation flowing so yeah think about it when you really you know be clear that you really want this to be more of a one way you can allow the q and a's you can obviously have someone you know Steph or Mark could step in at any point to us and say hey there's a question can you just answer this so there is a level of interaction but it's not the same as that that meeting um, forget trying to set all of this up in Outlook it's just not going to happen um, you need to set this up either in Teams or Yammer depending on where you want the, the event to take place you can't make them recurring so you have to be planned and book them all in in advance um, and this is a really big one. I, I always work really closely when I do events with the event manager or the marketing because it has to be a good event, right? You can have, you know, making an event live on Teams or Yammer is not going to make a bad event any better. So, you know, really think about that experience. We've had lots of conversations, you know, we put in that little menti poll. We've tried to think of different ways to make sure that this actually does stay engaging um, having a couple of different presenters so you're not listening to my voice all the time all of those things really help to make that experience better so you have to kind of think about that in in advance um do you want so, to so matt we're going to yep. interrupt you because to, to show how it works um we have had a couple of questions as you would have seen and obviously there's a couple of questions around yammer yep um, and I guess we're obviously doing this as a Teams live event and yep. the Yammer live event experience is very, very similar. Could you just explain how the Q&A um, window works um, um, and how Yammer live events um, sort of work in terms of the Q&A experience? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we've got, we might get, get to that later and we'll do a little bit of demo shortly, but certainly the live, the Q&A works as a Yammer conversation underneath the video. So you can do all of those that you can do all of the things in Yammer that you, you can do in a, in a conversation. So you can, you know, post discussions and you can post questions. It does limit the choice. I'm pretty certain to just being questions or that because obviously Yammer has poll functions, um, but you can point to those. So I'll try and demonstrate that a little bit later. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll come back into that one, but it's very, it's very much the same and from a producer point of view instead of having the question we've got a and i'm sure mel will show this a little bit later if we can is we have a little q a window um the only difference if you're running a yammer live event is it's the yammer conversation thread instead of the q a thread so it's very similar experience um yeah and hopefully you'll see that a little bit more um sort of demonstrated further on um Right, in which case, shall we move on and talk about that 
a bit more depth about organising. Yeah. So let's talk about the roles. So starting with the organiser, um, you kind of need to know what it is you want to plan. As an organiser, the person who sets the meeting up, the live event up, actually becomes a producer and a presenter as well. So they've got their hands in all parts of the pie. Um, you need to know where the meeting's going to be held and when, so it doesn't have to be all virtual. You might be having it in the auditorium at, at, at work and uh, all the presenters need to go to that auditorium. You need to put that in the invitation for those people. Who is going to be doing the producing? Who's going to be doing the presenting? Because you designate that roles, those roles to people. Um, do you want to turn on captions? Do you want to turn on question and answer? Do you, well, translations is on the way. It's not with us yet, but there'll be a translations um, capability. Um, and who is going to have permission to attend? So we've made this one a publicly available event, but you can say, you know, I only want my marketing department to attend or I only want, the, you know, these 15 people or this distribution group in my um, company um, to attend and so the organiser is the one who makes all those things happen. Now they can change those things uh, before the event starts, but once the event starts, there's no change in it. So I think now we are, yes, that's, that's Matt and I. <laughs> we are both about to do a demo of how to organise events. So uh, let me share my screen now and make sure I'm in the right screen. Should be this one, I think. Nope, that's not done it. Ah, how do I get out of here? It's a bit tricky when I'm demoing to get to my, let's do it in a browser window. Nope, I'm stuck. Let me try. Ah, yes. OK, so we've got it. OK, we've got it here now. OK, and I'll get that out of the way. Okie dokie. So here is my team's calendar. You can see here is my event and it's got this little icon showing that it's a team's live event, which is different to um, just a regular meeting. And here's our follow up meeting that we're going to have straight after. So up here I go to my new meeting. Uh, button and instead of clicking it, I click the down arrow and choose that I want to create a live event. Here I'll get asked, you know, what kind of meeting is it? It's a uh, live event about live events. And if there was going to be a location where it was being held, I get to put in the date and the time, that kind of thing. I'll just make it for tomorrow so it doesn't interrupt with what we're doing. Put in the details of, you know, get together so we can talk about live events. You can see here I'm automatically a producer, but I can then say, you know, I'd really like Steph to come along, not Stephen, Steph, so she can come along too, Mark can come along too, and Matt can come as well. And you'll see here they all show up as presenters, so ha, 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 I'm in charge. However, I could say Steph's going to help me produce and make her a producer as well. So down here, she's a producer and these two are presenters. Once I've determined my presenters and producers, hit next. And here's where I determine who's going to be allowed to view this um, presentation. So this is the one we've chosen. Oh, sorry, this is the one we've chosen, public, which means you don't actually need to sign in to be able to attend it. Then there's the options of uh, when I'm producing it, what do I want to include? And this Q&A one is the one that a lot of people will miss. Um, you can see here also there's two different types of recordings. This one is the one that you download and you can edit before you then send it out to other people. This second one, recording available to attendees, will automatically save a, um, a, a recording so that if somebody came and used the link like you did this morning, and the meeting had already been finished, they would just start watching the video. So a lot of people use that one. But what I've found is we often have quite a lot of blank space at the beginning or we want to add some extra information for follow up at the end. So we tend to turn that one off, but it kind of depends, you know, if you were the CEO of a bank and you were just doing something that people could watch later, you, you might want to put that one on. Totally your choice. So I'll hit schedule. 
it will put something in my calendar, but it will also give me, I can't move that out of the way, but there it is there. You can see it with the little icon. Here's where I would go to come in and join it. I can cancel it. Here are my producers and presenters. And later on, I will get the recording and the transcription, all that here, but it's not available, of course, at the moment. And up here, the important part, get attendee link. I click that, it's on my clipboard, and then I can put that into an email, into a newsletter, into a, um, onto a page on a website or a SharePoint page, and that's the link that the attendees use. These guys will get an invite. This is just a link that you need to send out to people. And then I'll close. So you can see here it is here, and at any time before the event starts, I can come back in here and say I want to edit it to make some changes. Maybe we want another presenter or something like that. All right, that's it from me. Now Matt's going to show you how to set up a Yammer live event. Yeah, thanks, Mel. I'll just share at my desktop. So here you can see um, Yammer, and this is our little sort of test area that we've got for, for Yammer. Um, any kind of community in, in, in new Yammer, so this is the new look Yammer. So if you want to look at the old one, let, let us know. We can we can do that outside of the event, but I'm focusing on the, the sort of new experience. You can see here in any of our communities, we have a little events tab. This will show any up and coming events. So if I was to schedule one, it will appear here, which I'll do in a second. But we can also look at any past events that we've we've run. And one of the questions was around what was that attendee experience like? Well, this is what a, a, the, the events look like. Um, you get the video window up at the top. Um, you'll get the space here that, and they are actually limited to either questions or discussion. So that they, the, the idea of running a poll in Yammer becomes a little bit more difficult. You could run it in the community itself, but not under the event in the Q&A. Um, but we can tag it. We can obviously add any attachments and we can post the questions, same as anything else. But that, I just thought I'd drop into that while that was there. In terms of creating an event, we get this nice big button. Now, this is all dependent on you having the right um, permissions and the right being in the right groups within your tenant. So if you go into Yammer and you can't see that, um, it's not it's probably because there's a group that you need to be a member of to be able to create the live event. But very similar to the Teams experience, we click it, it comes up with a window. It's just checking that I'm allowed to actually create uh, a live event. So again, exactly the same as sort of experience. I can give it an event name. Um, I can add presenters. So Mark, I'm going to add you to this one. I think uh, it will start to try and find him. Do you know, um, Matt, is there any limit to the number of presenters you can have? Yeah, so 10 is about the sort of largest. I was going to say 10 as well. Yeah. If you want to do more than this, there are some other options, which I'll just touch on in a moment, Mark, but that's a very good question. So I can obviously add any presenters and producers in here um, if I needed to. It's just having a little bit of a um, think about it. I can tell people what it's about. Now, this is where there are some nice features that they've added it that you don't get in the Teams one. The first thing is, is you can actually create this as a test event. Now I would always, if I was doing a big live event in Yammer, I would set up about half an hour before or even the day before a test event so that we can you know, run through, make sure that everybody's happy, that it's all flowing through nicely, that it appears in the group. But the good thing about this is that you can make it a test, a test event here and it won't kind of broadcast it out around the network that an event is live. Um, so it's pretty handy to do that. I would even, if you wanted to be really careful, I just set up a test like we have here, a test um, community that you can limit the membership of. It just means that it's a bit more contained when you're doing that. So I won't set this up as a test event. Obviously, I can enable or disable the Q&A. Unlike Teams, by default in Yammer, the Q&A is enabled. Obviously, it's there as a platform to engage people. I move on to next and I get the same. I get a really big obvious choice here. Do I want to produce the event in Teams, which is what we're doing today, or do I want to use an external app or device? Now, again, we won't cover this in a lot of detail now, 
but you can use um, services. There's things like OBS or Wirecast or different software that allows you to have a, pro a production experience and then stream it out into Yammer. Um, and you can do the same in a Teams at Live event as well. You can choose that external encoder, they call it. That's really handy if you're using a big event company or if you want lots of fancy transitions or if you really want a, a sort of broadcast TV quality type um, layout or if you wanted to have, say, the restriction we've got now is there's only my talking head and, and a presentation in the window that we present to you. But if I wanted to have three or four different people, you know, three or four different presenters, I would use a, an external app to do that, something like OBS. Um, maybe that's one for a future future session, Steph, to remember. But I, I'm going to do it in Teams. This gives us the, the exactly the same production experience as the Teams live event. Obviously, it's, tr it's trying to. You put an old a, a, a a earlier date. Yeah, let me. Yeah. The time the time is flipped over. You see, there you go. That's me talking. So let me go to nine o'clock. Uh, Matt, you have exposed that you're in a different time zone. Oh yeah, and see there you go. We've been more than three hours behind everybody. Um, so now it's creating the event. Um, it's just thinking about it as it does. So here's the here here is the event. That event is now available um, for people to use. I've got a little link here which says produce, which obviously opens up Teams. So it gives us. We'll, we'll touch on that experience in a moment. Um, but obviously, I can now share this out i can promote it if people wanted to ask questions in advance they can do so um so it's a little bit nicer you can kind of have a bit more of a pre pre-show pre-event warm-up you can get people to throw those questions in you might want to share some you know a, a little video beforehand that you could put in this window so you can do all of those little things um in that space and, it, and once it goes live, it's, this video will switch to the, the live feed. So that's pretty much what it is um, in Teams. And Matt, just a question that we've had uh, from the Q&A. Does, yeah. uh, does the Yammer event record like a regular live event? Yes. And are people able to download that? So it records the download. You can technically you can if you go, if you go into stream, but it stays as a, I'll show you. Hang on, let me go uh, back to the it basically stays in the video in the here so I can look at all my past events and they're all there so even like this was a test one I was doing yesterday and the day before I can go into those and I can watch them on demand um, and I've got things now like this is where if I wanted the captions I can turn captions on that's a restriction for Yammer which is slightly different from Teams if I wanted to have live captioning I can't do it in Yammer at the moment it's just a gap in the way that it, it brings out the video. Um, it's a bit of a gap, but everything else is the same. Obviously, I can see it on demand and there are captions. I'm not actually speaking in this video, which is why there's probably no captions coming up. Hopefully that covers that question. So some big tips, this is where, you know, well, I think that link is really important to say try using uh, a link shortener um, make sure that you do set up for the present presenters a separate invite that that uh, you know make sure that they're clear that they 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 don't want to join as an attendee because they'll suddenly be going well i can't present anything i can't do anything um i think certainly make sure um you've got someone hopefully there if you did need to set up another link um, be be ready with it but just yeah as mel said make sure you pick the right link when you send it out to attendees it gets very confusing i think i have done that in the past where i sent out a production one it's always always a last minute um rush then to get it all changed so be careful on that one um we'd always suggest q and a i, I it's open and transparent. One of the big reasons that I used to run run Yammer events wasn't to try and get numbers. It wasn't trying to, you know, be a, a kind of media mogul. It was about saying we have some really great events at the company that I work with. Why should it only be restricted to head office that can get to, to see and engage in those events? So, um, you know, be open. That's the reason to have these events. Um, I certainly remember International Women's Day, we ran an event, we had some great speakers, 
it was held in our head office at the company that I used to work with, but we had people all over Australia. So why restrict it? You know, why, you know, close that event down? You know, really important. I will touch a little bit on the tech. I always think get your tech team involved as early as you can if you're doing if you're doing streaming. There are different ways that you can help manage the network, and again, we'll probably be looking at that in a future uh, webinar about some of the ways that you can do that. I always, if you're doing a live in the days when you actually have events with people in a in a in a room, just have a real think about the network because if they all come down and sit there with their mobile phones and laptops or whatever they've got, it can take all the bandwidth and make it really problematic. So I'd always have a, a, a separate um, router that I put the live event through just so that it made it a lot easier and I, I made sure that we got the right um, experience and definitely have a test. Do a test event, run it all the way through, see what the experience is like. Um, yeah, don't leave it to the actual day of the event or the live event itself to suddenly realise that your network is, 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 is struggling or something's not quite working. Anything you wanted to add, Mel? Uh, no, I think you've got that all covered. Um, I, Matt, I do, I... I, I do yep. Matt, just um, I think uh, one of the big things um, and you've you've gone through it, but we've found is that um, uh, doing tests, dry runs is super important. Um, you, you can't you can't overly do, do your practice. There's a couple mm. of comments around um, people being a bit nervous about doing live events. I think that's a good thing. I think to have a bit of you know. So I think that, that the advice is that you uh, um, that you uh, uh, you try and experiment. Um, we have been asked a few times. Um, by um, our clients to actually um, support them on their first live events. I know um, we've done strategy days and various things for, um, for um, bigger organisations, and and I think it's um, it's a really good um, idea to, to either um, to hook in up with some experience uh, or. Um, Gain the experience yourself by running small things internally, um, so you actually get to um, to know how um, all the the little buttons work and uh, and uh, how to make sure that people can access the presenters can access um, you know the classic the access as presenters and don't access as attendees is the usual trip up one that we found. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's a good it's a good one to uh, um, do a bit right. of practice. And, and yeah. for, on that one, Mark as well, when the actual event is going to start. Get your presenters to all join at least 15 minutes ahead of time because uh, it doesn't matter if you all just sit there in the sort of backstage area with nothing to talk about. But if there is any drama, you can make sure that you've sorted that out before it's go live time. Yeah, I think I think that's the big message I think from these is look, the, the live events are great, but they are a lot of work. You do need to prepare. You do need to think it's not just like setting up a little Teams call and it being I mean, they, you know, it might get presented that way and it looks that easy when you press a few buttons, but it's actually all that other stuff that makes the difference about how successful they are. Hmm. And Matt, just a couple of questions that have come in from the Q&A. Yeah. Someone has asked, can you change the backdrop uh, or put in a different visual in the event window? Um, the short answer is it depends. Okay, <laughs> always. So um, if you're running it out of teams, then it will just pick up the default ones. So that Yammer one that I had, which was, um, let me just bring it up on the screen. So if I go to that future event, um, it will, it, it, it's kind of that, that's not great. Um, I think if you, I think you can change it if you use some of the um, the encoder apps. Um, but I'll 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 double check and, and get back to get back to people on that one. But it is basically pretty much the default. Um, Great. But obviously you can change the the good thing in Yammer is you can change these kind of you know your community tiles are easy to change. So if there's an event coming up, it's very easy to update this cover photo and put hey there's a great event coming and, and those sorts of things. Mm. And on that note, we actually have had a few more questions. So Mel, maybe this is going to be the perfect time for us to actually be able to have a conversation with the people that are attending now. Uh... I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go to the pub? 
(laughs) (laughs) Always. Um, We can continue to answer the questions on here. We wanted to give a couple of demos first um, before we don't have the ability to do that. So we might just push on and try and make it a bit briefer and we'll get to the questions when we're all at the pub. Yeah, so Mel, do you want to, um, obviously we've got the, um, what attendees can do. You've, as a Teams attendee, you've got that kind of experience yourself. Obviously you can't unmute, you can't chat with the producers, you can't, you know, you can only ask a question if it's been turned on. Um, you can, if you, I'm sure probably people have been doing with us talking multitask and go off into different teams and the, and the, the event still runs in the background. Um, Obviously, the great function in, in a Teams live event is you can have this captioning, the translation stuff's coming, which is uh, fantastic, where you can choose which languages you, you can uh, add up to six different languages that it will automatically caption in. Um, so they're sort of fantastic. And obviously, you can access the, the kind of event afterwards and see the recording. Generally, though, we would say download it afterwards or, or, or think about how you might distribute it. Um, this is the old old Yammer, so if you want to know what the experience is for an attendee, that's what it looks like in, in old Yammer. What you'll notice, and what I wanted to call out, is that as the event is live, you get this little um, little alert that comes up in your live event um, group. And when you look at that on, on the new Yammer, you'll see here it is, here's the live event running. It shows it in my community that it's running, and also it will actually say that it's live. It puts a little banner across your tenant so as you go in people will know that there's a um, a live event running and they can just click on this and go straight into the live event which obviously you've seen it kind of looks like that they can ask questions and do those things so what i'll do now is probably hand over to mel and to talk more about that um present (laughs) okay so what the presenter's role is the presenter's role is what Matt and I are doing right now is to give you the message either from uh, facing the camera or through sharing content on your screen. A couple of little things, um, it's possible to have up to 10 presenters. Um, You can also dial in, so if you just wanted to hear from someone who wasn't near a computer or whatever, a presenter can actually dial in to a presentation. Um, It it also can be useful for presenters to um, moderate the question and answer. Um, you can see that I think all of us have actually answered a couple of questions in this Q&A, but if you've got a lot of people, it sometimes designates someone just to do um, questions. Uh, getting ready. So it's kind of the usual stuff you'd be getting ready for if you were in a regular, uh, uh, presenting in a regular meeting in front of a bunch of people. You want to find out who the people are attending and what's important to them. You want to make sure you've got a bit of an agenda and a a run sheet so that everyone kind of knows what's expected of them. Um, Potentially have more than one presenter so that you can add value through the the, um, back and forth between the presenters. Um, Make sure all that your content is good and clean and neat and presentable. Rehearse, 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 especially if there's uh, more than one presenter. Make sure that you know where you're supposed to be, get the details perfect. Uh, Make sure you've had a good night's sleep, a little bit of exercise, a couple of stretches, a couple of breathings, maybe a cup of coffee before you get started. Um, And then, as I said, we get we get online early to make sure all the equipment works. You know, is my microphone plugged in? Am I smiling at the right webcam? Uh, Is my headset? Can I hear that kind of thing? and also I've put in other apps because we used Mintimedia at the beginning of this just for a little bit of engagement. You know, what else might you need to um, keep people interested? So on the next slide, uh, I've got um, the screenshot of what it looks like when you are a presenter. And you can see it looks like you're in a regular meeting. There's a couple of things that are different. Um, This presentation was uh, from a Swoop one a little while ago, uh, so you might recognise some of these faces. But, uh, and it uses the old control panel, but in that screenshot, you can see that they're actually live. This is a live event and they are live. They're going live to camera. 
All of those controls are pretty much the same as you would have in a normal meeting, except the Q&A button is added in at the end there. And um, so we've got a chat, which the people in the event can chat to each other, and the Q&A, which is the one that they can answer questions. You'll see in this one, uh, I think that's Ryan up in the top left corner, he has the little live button in front of him and he also has the red line around him. That shows that he's the guy who's on camera right now. Um, if he was sharing a screen, he would also have the red line that you're all very familiar with, I'm sure, around his content as well. But he doesn't actually get to see what's going live to air. Some people like to join on their phone um, as an attendee so they can see but there is a little delay, so some people find that um, confusing. And just underneath that, I've also posed, um, posted what the, cam what the um, control, banner, control bar looks like when you are not live yet, so in the pre-live section. So it, yellow means pre-live, red means live, um, but it's, and it's a little bigger. But basically, it just shows you um, the buttons a little closer. You can turn on and off your camera, you can share your screen, stop sharing, exactly the same as you do in a regular meeting. Um, I think next, Matt's gonna give us a demo on what it looks like, what he's pre a presenter in this meeting right now. Um, so he's gonna give you a little demo. So here you are, here's, oh, here's a very big screen. I'm getting Mark, obviously this is the, what we were saying. I can see that we're live, how long we've had the meeting. And obviously the countdown is longer than the, the, how long we've had the event because we all got on the call way before um, we went live. Um, here's ah, my sorry, I was like, hang on a second, I've got my camera on, so I just turned it off yes. and on again, and it's now it's on. <laughs> okay, so here's my here's my uh, the Q and A, and obviously you can see I was replying to some people. Here's our little chat. Sorry, it's little any messages that we want to put between us. So it's all there, and obviously I can see our participants. In this case, would be only people that we've invited for being presenters or. Um, you know, producers. So it doesn't show anyone who's attending the event. So that's pretty much how it works. I've got my little share share option. So this is this experience for me is almost identical to a Teams mm. meeting. So mm. it's actually really quite easy being being that that sort of presenter. But I'll and thanks. Now I know I have to update my screenshots because I didn't realise that the control bar has now moved to the top right. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that. Yeah, and the presenting, that's say so the only difference if that was a Yammer event is instead of having a QA, and a it's got a little Yammer window and it's it, instead of the live event Q&A, it shows the Yammer conversation thread. So very, very similar. Um, the thing with Yammer is there isn't the moderation like there is on here. Obviously, you can see here there's moderation, what's been published, what's new. So as people put the questions in, I can I can actually decide whether or not I publish them live. Obviously, everything's been nice and polite here, so everything's been published. So, yeah, that was that. that's the only difference with the Yammer events. Um, look, we, Mel's covered most of these things. Get ready, be prepared. You know, I, for better or worse, I chose this particular shirt because it was plain. You might not like the colour, but at least it's not making people's eyes go funny because it's going funny on the, the, the side. I've booked a room out. I'm in a shared workspace over in Perth, so I've actually booked the office, one of the offices here, so I know I'm not going to get disturbed. Um, I was trying to get some nice music up before the event, but that was one of the things that technically failed for us, so didn't worry about that. But it is nice to have that script, have that slide and that music when people join, so they know that it's live, that they, they don't just think their screen's frozen if they've only seen a picture. Um, but we started pretty much on time, so that was that was handy. Um, yeah, and just enjoy talking to people. The, the trick is to remember that there are people there. It's handy with the presenting window that I've got the other faces of the other presenters because they know at least I'm getting some feedback. Mm. Um, you know, whether, whether it's nodding or you know people going or whatever, um, you do get a bit of feedback. So that's always handy, and I always try and make sure I have my uh, little broadcast window and my little. Uh, presenter panel from um, the PowerPoint up on the on the screen. So I'm looking at the ca naturally looking towards the camera um, rather than kind of looking sideways all the time. 
Matt, I think we've got a couple of other slides with tips that we might be best to jump. I'm just noticing the time. Yeah. Um, so why don't we head straight down to producing and I'll just give a quick overview of that and then we'll jump to the pub. Cool. Okay, so this is the producer role. The producer's job is to make the experience a great experience for the attendees. Um, so you take ex take responsibility for what's going out live, when it starts, is everyone ready? Um, and uh, just basically making sure that everything runs smoothly. I've got a little um, list here of things you can and can't do, but basically the producer can do everything. The only thing they can't do is use an app, a browser, the phone app, a browser or dial in. They must use the desktop app to be able to produce. <clears throat> yeah, that's a key, definitely a key point. <laughs> yes. And so here you see, this is what I'm seeing now, a screen that says up at the top left, this is going to be the end of financial year town hall. And at the moment we're in a pre-live state and how many attendees up at the top left. Then at the top right is my control panel. So my chat, my, my question and answer, that kind of thing. Down the very bottom uh, is the things I have, I can send to air. So I've got a couple of presenters there. There's Jack, Chelsea and me, and also some content. And so it's my job to put that content into the left window that says add video or content from below. So I would choose, do I just want to see Jack's face? Do I want to see the content on the right, sorry, on the left and Jack's face on the right? Or do I want to show Chelsea's face um, or just content? And so once I've got that queued up on the left hand side, then I hit the send live button, which isn't available at the moment because there's nothing in there, to send it right. So thanks, um, Matt. This is what it looks like when we are live. So yellow is queued, red is live. So in this shot, you can see Chelsea is actually being broadcast just Chelsea. That's on the right hand side. And on the left, I've got it queued up to say we're going to move to having content left and Chelsea. So when I hit that yellow button that says send live, that will move that into the live window and then I could queue up what the next shot is going to be. You can see over on the right side that there's a big red end button. And so as the producer, I'm the only one who gets that button. Um, and I basically say, right, we are done. We're over and out. And once that button has been hit, you cannot uh, restart the meeting at all. Or restart the event, I should say. So I am going to give you a demo of my screen now. I just might queue up. Um, let's put Matt in the queue. So Matt, you're going to be on screen as well. And when I share my screen, it's going to be a little bit weird because you'll see me sharing my screen inside me, sharing my screen inside me, sharing my screen. Oops, I've gone off to other things again. It's not as easy to do that as you would think. Here you are. So, so what you can see is that we are in the How to Run a Teens or Live event. It's been going for oop, an hour since we first got on. Attendees, here's Matt in the queue section, ready to be queued, and he's in the yellow. And over here is what I'm sharing right now. And so you can see I'm sharing my screen, which is sharing my screen, which is sharing my screen. So quite confusing. Down the bottom here is Steph, here's Matt, here's Mark, here's me, and here's the content. So at any time I can change my mind and say, you know, I'm going to put the content on the left and myself, oops, content, add content, and myself on the right. And when I'm ready, I will send that live and that will move it into the red screen. Give it a second. Um, so now you can see that what's going live is me on the right hand side of my content. And just to show you that again, I will now say I'm going to show myself as a full screen. I'm all lined up ready and here I go. And you should see that instead of having my screen anymore, you've got me, yay. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> I think that's pretty much where we'd like to leave this because we've got five minutes